Good morning. I'm Rick Bonfim. On my left is Jonathan Dunn and, of course, Andy Hines. And we're sharing with you about faith. We're living in a time where faith is essential. I don't know what I would do if I couldn't trust on a power higher than myself. And so I put my faith in God. And uh, Paul defines faith this way, unshakable confidence in the reality of the unseen world. Mm. To believe the promises that be fulfilled after your time as an Abraham was really an exercise of faith. I know you have a family, you have a child, you have a business, you have a, a, a situation that, that you don't know how to control or how to bring together, and you need faith. And so this morning I want to share with you about faith. First of all, verse 4 says, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. I don't know how Paul or the writer of Hebrews came to that conclusion because God decided that really uh, uh, Abel was, uh, gave us a better offering, which was a lamb, an animal and burned and offered to God uh, as a sacrifice. But in the Old Testament, offering and sin and uh, offerings were also made of grain. But God chose Abel. I don't know why. But his, his offering, his offering was more pleasing to God than, than, than Cain. John. And if you look here, Looking at the verse in Genesis, just, just the, the commentary, uh, it, it says that Abel, he brought forth the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And you go, well, that, you know, why? Well, if you study the book of the Leviticus, you'll know why. And that's just a little commercial because we have a series on Leviticus right there on our website at the homepage, Laterain.com. Pastor Rick has 15, 16, or 17 30-minute teachings out of Leviticus. And you'll see over and over again in Leviticus that when the priests, the Levites, were told to bring the offering, they had to burn the fat on the brazen altar. God wanted the fat and he wanted the sacrifice as stated, this was a type of Christ and the cross. In other words, uh, there has to be uh, life for life. The death that we deserve for our sins cannot be covered by vegetables. It had to be the sacrifice of an animal so that God could have mercy. And, and for some reason, even before Moses and the institution of the, the tabernacle and the priesthood, Abel was able to understand that it had to be uh, a blood sacrifice to cover over his sins to typify Jesus on the cross. As I'm listening to John and, and Rick talk about Abel, um, my thoughts drift over to following along with, like with Enoch. Verse 5, by faith Enoch was taken to heaven so that he would not see death. Uh, immediately I think also of, of Elisha, another man that was taken to heaven. Um, and through faith, when I read this, and I, I go back to what we said in, in uh, verse 1, uh, that it's the substance of things hoped for. Uh, when I read these men being able to do things like this, uh, my faith gets stirred because I know if it's if these kind of things are possible for them, then the things that we're facing today can be possible for us to do almost the same kind of things that are necessary for us to get through what we're dealing with today. Amen. Let's let's move to to verse uh, uh, verse. Uh, let's let's redo verse five a little more, John. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was found because God had translated him. So Enoch was taken by the Lord because he walked with God. Uh, he, he pleased God. His testimony is that he pleased God. He pleased God because he put his faith 
exclusively in Christ and on the cross. Abel offered a, a sacrifice that symbolized the death of Christ in the mind of God. And so faith grows when you begin to exercise in small things. You know, for instance, when I was going to school in Madison, Florida, at uh, North Florida Junior College, I put a dollar a week into an envelope, and I'll give it in church. I sprayed with uh, Chanel Number no. 5, <laughs> and I, then I ironed it, ironed it so, so it would stick. <laughs> that was a smelly envelope that woke up the set treasure of the church. She came to me and said, Ricardo, why are you doing this? Because I want to get God's attention. Now, I started small. I began to give to God a 10% of what I earned. I earned $100 a week. And so I gave that whole, the whole weekend $10 to the Lord. And what I'm saying to you is that Enoch didn't do nothing special that would call your attention, but he pleased God. What he did, the way he walked, it says Noah, uh, uh, Enoch walked with God. He walked with God. And so God just took him. It must have been that God loved him. He cared for him. What do you mean by walking with God? You know, I, I know what that is. See, at 5 o'clock, I've got some cowboy movies. I have three channels, and I can see all kinds of uh, cowboy. It's give up the cowboy movie and walk with God doing f hours of 5 and 6. That would be a, a difficult thing for me to do. But, but because I serve the Lord all day long, so from 5 to 6, I want my cowboy movie. Okay, so giving that small hour, perhaps 30 minutes of it to the Lord, and I go into prayer, is what we're talking about. Noah didn't have channel 5, channel whatever, TV. He walked with God. There's nothing more important to him. And my question is, begin small. Begin small. Begin, begin in, in, a, in a way that you can do it. John. You know, some might wonder about this because... Uh, as Andy said, Elijah as well was taken up. And so the question is, well, how does this work? Because, uh, you know, Paul says in 1 Corinthians that uh, flesh cannot, earthly flesh cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So how can they be in heaven with their earthly bodies? And the answer is simply that, that Elijah and Enoch were, were a precursor to this concept out of uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 52, where Paul says that at the trumpet, when the trumpet sounds, the dead shall raise incorruptible, and we, meaning all who haven't died, will be changed, mm -hmm. okay? So Elijah and Enoch, when they were taken up to heaven, were given in a, a heavenly body. And it, just as, as all believers in Christ's will who, who have not tasted death, at the return of Jesus, you know, because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. And, and the reason that their bodies were changed was not because they were perfect. You know, if we read all of the, continue reading chapter 11, you'll find that a lot of the people that are listed in there had sins. So it's, it's, it's not a list of perfect people who didn't sin. Jesus was the only one that was already been established in the book of Hebrews. Jesus is the only one who was perfect without sin. But what it was is that, is that uh, their hearts were right towards God. Now let me say it again. What, God judges the heart, and their hearts were right towards God. And they made some, maybe they made some bad decisions, or they messed it up here, or said some things there. Uh, but their hearts were pure towards God. They, they wanted to please God. They wanted to God, God to be happy with their lives. They, they weren't seeking to please themselves all the time, and, and, and that turned the heart of God to them. And God said, well, I think I'm just going to take you early because, you know, your heart is just so pure towards me. And, and uh, you know, I would really be honored if, if uh, I could say that about myself, but, man, I don't know that I can, but I, I trust in the blood of Jesus. Amen? You know, uh, one of the things I would ask, uh, John, I, I, that thought about when I read that in verse 5, and I'll go on to verse 6, but by faith Enoch was taken to heaven so that he would not see death. I think of the scripture that says, for it's appointed unto man once to die, 
than the judgment. And I just wondered um, how he bypassed that. But at any rate, verse 6 goes on and says, Without faith it is impossible to please God, for he who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder for those who diligently seek him. Now, when I read that, I go back to, to Mark chapter 1, verse 11. Jesus is getting baptized. The Holy Spirit comes down and it says, A voice came from heaven saying, You are my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. That tells me that Jesus operated in faith. And uh, as a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, uh, this is something that we could explore more. Uh, what, what do you think he's talking about, Rick? Well, one of the things that the Word does to us is that the Word is Jesus. The Word is Jesus. It's the ability to study the Word and personalize it. A lot of people say, I don't have nothing to say, I can't say, I don't feel. It's because they're not in the Word. See, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a difficult thing to have faith when you're not in the Word. Mm, and, so, and so I, I decided to, uh, to keep Bibles open in my house. I have one up front, one inside, one in the, my bedroom, one in the table, because I want to make sure that if God wants to talk to me, I will have the Word open so I can relate to Him. And I started doing this about several months ago, and I'm having a wonderful time because throughout the day, I mean, my day begins like uh, 5 o'clock, I'm home, and I'm there until the next morning, and uh, I'm here at the office at 8 o'clock. So it's between 5 and 6 or 7, 8 o'clock before going to bed. Uh, I, I feel like uh, he rewards me with peace. As I study the Word, I get peace, I get gentleness, I get tenderness, I get... Uh, what to do, you know. Uh, he helped me to cook. You know, I I, I I put a fillet of catfish on the on the on the stove and a skillet on a pan and uh, and I'm watching cowboy movies at the same time and I burn the fish. Matter of fact, I I I, uh, I burned everything yesterday, meaning that I'm in the word and I don't say that you need to burn your food. What I'm saying is my mind is deciding what I want the best, amen? Mm. But I want him to reward me with strength, with peace, with good sleep, with joy, and lead me as to what I need to do. This morning, somebody prayed for me. I think it was Jason. He just put his hand on my chest, and he began to pray. And I heard uh, a, a word that said, preach on the work of the Holy, what is the work of the Holy Spirit in your life? And of course, I'm going to get into it as soon as I get to my office, because that's the first message I have to preach. So he's rewarding me with something like that. Amen? So maybe that was, uh, maybe the fish was a burnt offering. It was, <laughs> <laughs> like it was a burnt offering. <laughs> okay, John. Well, as we think about so let's go to some examples. Just thinking about Pastor Rick, you, you're talking about the Word, staying in the Word, and, and the Word sort of encourages you to practice your faith. I think uh, Andy mentioned that uh, the community of believers is supposed to also encourage you to practice your faith. But So what kind of things do we find in the Word? Well, you know, reading the Gospels, it's a, this concept that it's impossible to please God without faith and, and that God responds or diligently rewards those who have faith. I mean, that's repeated over and over again in the Gospels. So just one example is Mark chapter 2, where you have the man who uh, is paralyzed and laying on a mat. And if you remember the story, the, he has four friends. Jesus is teaching inside a house that's so packed that they can't get in. And the four friends carry him up onto it, and that had to be an operation. I mean, you're talking about a pulley system or something to get him up on that roof, right? Because he, he doesn't have the strength to get up there himself. So they get him to the top of the roof, and then they begin to tear apart the roof and then lower him down straight into the living room. 
where Jesus is. And so then in verse 5 of, of chapter 2 of Mark, it says, When Jesus saw their faith, <clears throat> he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, your sins are forgiven you. So Jesus responded when he saw faith. But see, now Jesus had discernment of spirits, okay, one of the nine gifts of the, of the spirit, nine gifts listed in uh, 1 Corinthians 12. But, but what does it mean that Jesus saw their faith? Well, they did something in the physical realm. Oh, okay. It's not just, you know, some sort of invisible thing. Physically did something to show God that, that they were moving in faith. And so, so that's one of, the, one of the ways that we can ask ourselves, what are some things that I need to do physically in my environment to create an atmosphere where faith is demonstrated to God? And you begin to brainstorm, and you'll think of all kinds of things that you might could do. You can... You can Put a put a cross in in your in your house. You can you can uh, bury stakes with red ribbon on the four corners of your property. You can pour oil in the in the middle of your yard. You can uh, you can anoint your sons and daughters with oil. All kinds of things that you can begin to do. Pastor Rick talks about putting Bibles. That that's a demonstrating your faith. I mean that's that's physically seeing your faith. And so. One of the challenges I want you to think about is what are some things you could do to physically demonstrate your faith to God? And God will see it. I mean, I, God's not blind. God knows your heart. And as you begin to demonstrate your faith and begin to affect your environment with your faith, then God responds to that, just as we saw in the scriptures here. You know, in Abraham, if I look at verse 8, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place where he would receive later an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was going. A uh, good friend of ours, uh, Jimmy and Susan Bamberg from uh, Watkinsville, Georgia, were telling a story about when they were called to go to, uh, to leave the church that they were in and move to another location. Uh, he ran across a devotional by Oswald Chambers called, Will You Go Without Knowing? And it was based on this particular uh, scripture. And uh, one of the things that they talked about was Abraham, God said, go, and he went without knowing where to go. An example of that John was just talking about, walking in faith, uh, Jimmy read that, and he read the scriptures, and he decided that that's what God wanted them to do. And so they launched out, from where they knew they were supposed, you know, where they were. They believed the Lord was calling them to go and they ended up in Wisconsin. But the point was is that they took the step, they did physically something based on that. Now you can go back to Romans chapter 4 and see more things about Abraham. But I would say that the, the, the most interesting part about Abraham, when I go back and I look at, at verse 18 in Romans 4, against all hope he believed in hope, that he would become the father of many nations according to what was spoken. And verse 19 said, not being weak in faith, he didn't consider his own body to be dead. He's 90 years old and she's 99 years old. And so they have a kid. Now that takes great faith to do that. So the point to be made is sometimes walking in faith is a, is, is a little, makes your whole stomach turn a little bit as you start to step out. And Rick, I've heard your stories many times. You've done this many times. Why don't you share one of the most difficult steps you took in faith? Well, when I was about 15, my father put me on a plane to New York City, a one-way ticket, with nobody here to know or understand. I was by myself at JFK, and God began supplying, began providing. The manager of a hotel, uh, a restaurant, in the airport, they had tables outside, uh, you know, at the entrance uh, outside. Uh, he began to feed me. For a week, he just reserved a plate for me, and I would eat one time a day, a large meal. And so that's how things started with me. Uh, faith of this man, in my faith, I didn't know what to do. It says here that uh, Abraham uh, did not know where to go. He knew nothing about Canaan, but he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of the promise. 
as in a strange country, uh, a resident alien. <clears throat> you know, he moved into an area where he was not known, for he looked for a city which has foundation. Abraham knew all of this would lead to something eternally, heavenly, because God pointed the promises to that is uh, up there. So these days, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for direction in purpose. And uh, I'll give you an example of something just really recent in our staff. Before, last week, we had a visitor here from, uh, from uh, another country, another state. And this person uh, uh, was conversing with us, and we're telling this person that uh, uh, we're going, uh, Jason and Jonathan Dunn are preparing on the 21st of this month, which is next week, to leave for Athens, Greece, to prepare a trip of February 2023. And the trip is to the seven churches of Revelation. And we have all close to 40 people, 27, 28 people already committed to go. But we had nobody in Athens, Greece to help us. No, we didn't, we didn't want to get a, someone uh, a stranger. And so we, and he, this man that started visiting us said, I have a contact there. And he gave us the number and John called. Right, right John? Mm -hmm. And suddenly we have a contact and somebody's going to meet him at the airport. So that, that's faith beyond and above. We want to pray for you now for just five minutes. And uh, let's do that. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will give my brother, my sister, faith. Oh God, I pray that this situation, Lord, that is just totally, totally, completely out of order, and there's horrible need, oh God, the Holy Spirit will deal with it, God. Father, bless this woman, bless this daughter, bless this child. At this very moment, he's saying, I don't know what to do. My father left me. I'm alone in the world. My mother passed away last year, and I don't have a place to stay. God provides a place to stay, Lord. Come into that young lady, 20 years old, and let her know that she's not alone, that God is watching over you, my sister. God is providing for you. God is going to open a door so you can be blessed. God is going to pay the bills that you have. Oh, God, I pray for that lady, Lord. The left in here and went there, God. But everything is locked up, not happening. Uh, it's just like a, there's a lock. There's a lock in there. Let this person know, God, that in the midst of the confusion and the disappointment and the abandon, Lord, there is someone who can help. Humble this person, Lord, to respond to the situation. And cause oh, the you, problem to yes, disappear Lord, before you. their very eyes. Thank in Jesus' God. name. Yes, Jesus. Father, thank we God. thank you so much for all that you're doing for those that are listening. Thank you, and God. Lord, yes. I pray for the courage that people need to step out and take yes. that one step that they think that you want them to take, Father. Thank and God. let them know that even if they take oh, a step God. and oh, they're God. believing you and it's not the oh, right yes. step, you, you will cover for them, Father. Thank you, God. You'll get them where they need to go. You've always done that. You did that with my wife and I. When we moved from Columbus, Ohio to Tulsa, our income was cut in half and all our expenses doubled. And for seven years, we never missed a payment on anything. And we grew. How that happens, only you Thank know. You, and so, Father, I pray right now Thank for people that they would hear you, yes. have courage to step out, oh, and, God. and have confidence that they're walking with you, oh, God. just like Enoch, just like Elijah, Thank you, yes. just like Paul, just like Rick and John and yes. Jason. Yes. And Father, I thank you, and I, I want to pray for Rick and uh, John and Jason as they go to Greece and Turkey, and they work their way thank through you, these God. churches. That they'll have confidence that they hear from you. Yes. And yes, when they yes. come back, Father, oh, you'll have God. all the pieces oh, put Lord. together oh, God. in Praise Jesus' Bless name. Bless my brother and my sister, Thank Lord. God. Bless them, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, God. Oh, Father God, be with John yes, and Jason God. as they land in Athens, Greece, that there will be the hand of God show up, direction, purpose, determination, and most of all, favor and blessings of God abundantly upon their lives, God. We pray for those that connect to RBM in this channel, Lord, RBM, Latterain.com. L-A-T-T-E-R-A-I-N. Latte and Rain together. That you connect with us every single day of your life. Thank Every you. morning, Lord, yes. through all the studies in the Bible studies, thank in the name you, of the Father, yes. Son, and Holy thank Spirit you, God. of God, I praise thank you, Lord. You, I thank you. I like to pray now specifically for those that have no, don't have a job, that you're unemployed, okay? You're just mm. in, unemployed, yes, okay? Pray, pray, yes, John. God, we lift up those who are in a position, God, where uh, they don't know what to do next because they don't have a job. Yes, their bills are piling up. And, and they're having a hard time figuring out where to go next, God. We pray and speak into being, Lord, that you would bring a connection with somebody, Lord. That you would connect them with somebody who knows somebody who needs somebody just like them, Lord. That you would open the door and we call it forth in Jesus' name, Lord. We pray that you would reveal to them what they need to do, where they need to go, some phone calls they need to make that they haven't thought about yet. That you would open that door, Lord God. That you would bring in some creativity that has not been there yet. Lord God, that you would reveal to them how to go to the next step to find that right job. Provide for each one. God, lift up their spirits. Be with your people, Lord God, who are seeking a job and need a good job, God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we continue to pray, Lord, for Anita Smith, yes, Nancy God. Dunn, Olive and Chris, and Gary Liverman. Thank you, God. We continue to pray, God, that 3226 Horn Springs Road will sell. Yes, God. We continue to pray for Dino Cates, Hilltop Realty, God. We continue to pray, Lord, for all of those that are a blessing to us, John, yes. those that support our ministry, John. God, we lift up to you uh, Terry Frierson and Patty Frierson. We lift up to, to you the Rhodes. God, we lift up to you the Cates. Yes. We lift up to you Mike Reeder, all our board, Lane Tucker, Kurt John Scott. Freeland, David Nutter, Kurt Scott, Ryan Brooks, Mike Reeder. Miller. Lane God. Tucker, God. Yes, Lord. We lift up John Freeland. Bless us. The Odeon family. Oh, God. The Odeon family, Tom Lord. And Bob and the family. David the Nutter, God. All the boys, all the girls, Lord. We just thank you for oh, these God. people who have stood oh, by Lord us Lord Jesus. For so many we years, pray God. specifically, Lord. Pray that you bless them, God. For Give Cindy Walker and thank John you, Walker, Lord. Mm. We pray for yes, Jace God. as his birthday approaches today, thank Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Yes, we God. pray for Sandy and Tom, Lord. Oh, and no, and Angelina Hope, Lord. Mm -hmm. We pray, God, for Sammy and Cindy Thank you, and for Lord. Lucia yes, Grace, God. God. Bless we our continue families, to pray God. for Thank Sophie you, and Anna Kraft, for Harrison and Mary Jane, wherever mm -hmm. they are, God. Thank you, God. We pray, Lord, for Reinaldo, Renato, Daniel, and I pray, God, that you strengthen me with your Holy Spirit mm, to continue you, to Lord. preach. Yes, Forgive God. all my sins, oh, God. Have mercy upon my life, Lord. Give me hope for tomorrow, Lord Jesus. We pray specifically, Lord, for Kathy and Philippe oh, and yes, Silvana God. and Kim Bless Kim, Lord. We yes, still remember our, our sister Betty Anointed. McKinney, Thank Lord. You, pray for yes, her for God. favor. We pray, God, specifically for Talita and Sally, Lord. We Thank pray for Randall yes, Cup, God. God. Bless your servant, Lord, in Brazil. Thank oh, you. Holy Spirit of God. We praise Thank you, God. God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, I want to pray also for those that were looking for jobs and we're in an environment where inflation and, and uh, gas prices and stuff is just completely yes, out of control. Yes, yes. You said in your word in, oh in Mark chapter 4 that one yes. of the weapons the enemy yes. uses yes. is anxiety, fear, yes. and cares. And Lord, I pray right yes. now yes. that people that, are, that, that they can trust you, Father, inflation is a name that has to bow its knee to the name of Jesus yes. uh, Thank you, and fear yes, and God. worry are Thank not going to be part of their yes, life God. Father so I'm asking yes, God. that Thank those you, that are so in yes. situations right now where they, they're worried I don't have enough gas I've got to have food I've yes, yes, yes. That Thank you, God. they'll walk with you yeah. hand in hand and just yes, like the God. widow at Zarephath Father Thank they'll you, just keep filling their oil mm -hmm. and it'll just keep running until the time when you've got something better for him, Father, and we thank you for thank that you in God. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I hope that you tune to us to receive prayer. Remember, if you want to contact us, it's latterain.com, L-A-T-T-E-R-A-I-N, or the word latte and the word rain put together. 
Uh, our telephone number is 706-353-1546. One more time, 706-353-1546. And, and, and representing Jonathan Dunn and Andy Hines, I'm Rick Bonfim. The Lord bless you and make you strong today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Estrela Alva Brie